honored and delighted to be here. It is a presumption of democracy that governments should listen to the people. But should they listen to the people when the people are thinking or when the people are not thinking? There are three chief limitations of public opinion uh, as found in normal and conventional public opinion polls. First, the public is usually not well informed about complicated issues. Doshusai is a perfect example. Social scientists have an explanation for this. They call it rational ignorance. If I have only one vote in millions, why should I pay a lot of attention to complicated issues because my individual vote or opinion won't have much effect? As you will see in the deliberative poll, individuals do have an effect, and so they do have a reason to pay attention. The second limitation is that sometimes the opinions reported in polls don't even exist. People never like to say they don't know, so they will almost randomly choose an opinion, uh, choose a, an option. So in my country, when people were asked about the so-called Public Affairs of 1970, Public Affairs Act of 1975, they offered opinions about it. Public Affairs Act of 1975. But it was fictional. There was no such thing as the Public Affairs Act of 1975. But people uh, would nevertheless respond with an opinion when they were asked about it. Then the Washington Post asked them 20 years later what they thought of the repeal of the Public Affairs Act of 1975, and they had opinions about that too. But it was also fictional. <laughs> A third problem is that when people do talk about public policy or politics, they tend to talk to people like themselves. So they never really think about the other side of the argument. And there's some research now that the internet makes this worse because people go to the websites that they agree with. So my question is, what would the people think under good conditions? If they thought their voice mattered, if they got good information, and if they listened to the different sides of the argument. So we will take a scientific sample and then, uh, and then uh, expose it to a day of good conditions where it can really think about the issues and get its questions answered. So 
then it will take the same questionnaire as on first contact, or it take the same questionnaire as before, and we will see the changes of opinion. And with a scientific sample, uh, a relatively small scientific sample, we can represent what public opinion would be in a city, a prefecture, a nation. We've recently done the entire European Union, all 27 countries. I thought I invented this, but it actually goes back to ancient Athens. In ancient Athens, there were deliberating microcosms of the population chosen by lottery. What's a lottery but a random sample? Bob Luskin and I recently returned this process of decision making to modern Athens. Uh, George Papandreou had the vision to have us implement that, and now he's just been elected prime minister. <laughs> Papandreou, the new Prime Minister of Greece. And he's said he will use it for national policy as well now. Yeah. So we think that this method has great potential to improve democracy. And so I salute our Japanese collaborators for their vision in bringing it to this country. And thank you.